Well, hey, listen, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Start Disrupting podcast. Uh, we're excited uh, from the Virginia Tech Corporate Research Center. The, the purpose of this really is to just provide some exposure. You know, I go on the road and I hear from people. Uh, we've got over 220 companies in the Corporate Research Center. And uh, a lot of times people on, on the outside really don't know what's going on. And we've got some of the coolest, most disruptive companies in the park. And so this, the purpose of this is to really highlight and showcase some of those, some of those innovators and great thinkers. Um, you know, why we consider calling it Start Disrupting is, is frankly, uh, you know, new technologies, new business models are, are driven by something that has to be disruptive. You know, the 10x model of having uh, not just an incremental change in an industry or a model, but a, a 10x change is what gets investors, customers excited. Anything less really makes it actually harder for you to get into the market. So, um, you know, in, in it, with my background and experience in startups, both in software and biotech, um, it, it has to be disruptive. You have to change the game. And, um, you know, if you're not getting pushback from the industry and challenges about why should they be doing things a certain way, um, then you're probably not disrupting enough. So you've got to be disruptive to the point of where you're really getting pushback and challenges from people who are trying to protect the old guard. But if we're going to move this field forward in any way, um, you know, you've got to think about it from that perspective. So today we're going to kick it off with a biotech segment and we're really excited. And I think it's only appropriate because normally most of us who are in the biotech field would be in San Francisco this week for the JP Morgan healthcare conference. Um, but unfortunately COVID has intervened and um, this will be probably the first time in a decade that I'm not in San Francisco this week. So uh, given that it's a JP Morgan healthcare conference week, we've, we've got a special guest uh, Eric Gatenholm from Cell Inc. And, um, you know, Eric, we're going to, we're just going to pretend that we're somewhere in a coffee shop in San Francisco, maybe the lobby of the Hilton. It's probably raining and cold. So uh, we'll, we'll pretend it's JP Morgan week. But uh, Eric, really great to have you as, as our very first guest here. And uh, nothing, nothing defines disruptive more than Cell Inc. and what you're doing with your company. So, uh, well, welcome to the show. And uh, congratulations, frankly, on your meteoric rise. We're excited to have you in the park and we're just excited to watch the trajectory that you're on. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's a pleasure. And, you know, uh, at the JPM conference, it's, it's, an important, uh, it's an important start of the year. It's a really good way of kicking off the year. I myself, for the last four or five years, been promising uh, myself and the team essentially to make it out there and we still haven't. So it's, uh, yeah. we were hoping that last year, last year was going to be the first time and then, yeah. ah, COVID hit and, uh, or, you know, we were at a different conference and it was starting to get a little weird. And then this year we were supposed to, but. Ah. Yeah, it is, it is. It is a, it is a full on circus and, you know, the whole healthcare industry descends on San Francisco, but um, yeah, we're, we're glad to have you on here. Hey, uh, you know, just jumping right into the topic of disruption. T tell us what's disruptive about selling, what you're doing and, um, you know, what do people need to know about the way you're going about changing this industry? It's a great question, Brad. So, so um, selling is, and, uh, and I, might, uh, I might aggravate a few of our researchers, but selling is a very strong marketing and sales company. And even, even if our, you know, our it, technology- anyone, anyone who follows your LinkedIn profile knows that. So that's, <laughs> you're not, you're sales, not sales, uh, sales. divulging a secret. We all know that. And you, you, do a great, you do a great job of promoting the brand, which is necessary. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. So, so the, um, you know, the sales and marketing is important for, for, for us because that's really where we were able to differentiate ourselves. So our technology is um, bioprinting using 3D printers and, and, and bio inks and materials to essentially uh, create these constructs using cells and the biocompatible materials uh, resulting in essentially tissues. So, so if you grow these, these uh, cell constructs long enough, they should resemble or, or become tissue, and then you can use these tissues for, for uh, development of new uh, uh, cosmetic products, or for for developing new treatments, or even in the future for patient use. But what's really disruptive about us is that we were not first with the printers. We we were by no means first in this industry, but what we did is that we we dragged down the prices, and while while everybody was selling these bioprinters. For you know, two three hundred thousand dollars a pop, 
we entered the market with something that would cost $4,999. It's a mm-hmm. credit card swipe for academic institutions. And that really took off. Yeah. So, so we really approached it from the masses. We wanted this, this technology to disrupt the industry by bringing the prices down and bring it to the masses. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great point because people think of disruption as uh, needing to be technology-based. But a lot of times a business model, you know, you being able to uh, create a business model that makes it viable to sell these things at that price point. Uh, you know, it sort of reminds me of the way Uber has disrupted an industry and, um, you know, by really innovating on a business model, not necessarily a technology per se. But um, I'd be remiss if I didn't make a quick comment right at the top here uh, regarding your background. You have been, uh, congratulations. Most people wouldn't understand the background, but I appreciate it uh, being unicorn status now. Tell us a little bit about where you stand financially and how the markets are rewarding you right now. We're so, we're so excited about this. It's truly a teamwork and a, and a dream come true uh, for all of us here at the company. But we, we recently reached our, our uh, $1 billion valuation. Uh, so, so we took a pretty di- also disruptive and unconventional route to the market. So we did an IPO the same year that we got started. Uh, super small. We were, you know, 10, 10 people during our IPO. That was the entire company. Uh, but, but since then, we've been growing tremendously. And now, uh, finally, a few weeks ago, we reached our, our unicorn status. So that proud. Is, We're that so is happy. cool. Yeah, that's got yeah. to feel, feel good. And you mentioned the team, which is important. And, um, you know, one of, one of the points I really wanted to bring up is it's so important. You know, you, you really, a, a company that is driving towards disruption, either in a model, an industry, a technology, uh, really just can't get there without a solid team and uh, a leader like yourself to, to really keep the team moving forward. Um, you know, how do you think about building the team? How do you think about keeping the team thinking big? It's easy to sort of move towards an incremental mindset once you get going. How do you keep sort of the disruption mentality going? Very good question. It's, it's, a, it's a work in progress all the time, every day. I mean, it's to, to be disruptive, you have to incrementally be, uh, be pushing yourself forward, right? So, yeah. So it's, it's a, um, I think, first of all, the team is essential. And that's something that was, that was very, uh, very we, were, we were taught that very early on at, at, at VT in business school. It was, you know, you got to assemble a, a, a great team. You got to have yeah. the right people in the right place. And, and that's what we had. So we had great technological uh, uh, experience with, with our co-founder. We had a uh, financial background and another co-founder. Uh, IT in another, and, and then management and sales in another. So, right. so I think for, from the beginning, we've been really structured to 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 approach all of these these different areas. But thinking big, it's a it, it takes a lot of time because it's it's all about essentially going for the high risk areas. Right. While everybody's saying, "Ah, oh, you should raise the prices," you know, you got to be the one in the room that says, "How about if we we sell them at a quarter of the price?" Yeah. What would happen? Is there anything else that we could sell? in conjunction with that, where we could make the money instead. Right. And, and it's, it's just all about asking those questions. Yeah, that's really a good point. And, you know, I was thinking about this as the kind the culture of disruption and keeping the momentum, because especially in our industry, an industry that's heavily regulated, whether you're talking biotech, pharmaceutical, drug discovery, uh, omics, for example, you know, there are so many forces that cre- create friction against the disruption. And by that, I mean, just think about the FDA and the regulatory process. And so our teams naturally are always pressured to go to the least common denominator. And so what, where you start with a great idea that's big and disruptive, all these little forces like regulatory and, and you know, markets and, and physician adoption, for example, um, all of those create friction and it's easy to give into those friction points. And all of a sudden a big disruptive idea becomes kind of watered down and incremental. And so I, I think when, when people think about running businesses, starting businesses and being disruptive, they have to be prepared for the, those friction points and not, you know, they need to think about the overcoming those barriers as opposed to giving into those barriers. What, what kind of friction you're, points do you see from? You're from- absolutely right. I, I uh, I'm really happy you bring those points up because it's 
um, it's friction points. It's, it's risk, right? Yeah. And it's so easy. If you're listening to people who've been in the industry for 20, 30 years, you, you, people have been burned really yeah. badly in this industry. It's so easy to get burnt in biotech because I mean, it, as it should be, I mean, no, it, it should be quite easy because you're working with people's lives. You're working with, with things that have to be safe. Yeah. But, but on the other hand, if you follow the same, uh, the same kind of guidelines that everybody's going after, and if you're, you're, you're just going to be another me too. Yeah. And, and, and you have to somehow break away from, from those, um, from those call it call it friction points or 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 the way that others are doing marketing or the way that others are doing sales and try to find your own way and i think the best way to do that is really uh, of course first of all have someone who's in who, who understands business a lot of biotech companies are are, are typically uh researchers which is very good they understand technology but perhaps right. sometimes they just don't understand how to think of business in a different manner so Again, at VT, we were, we were taught this quite early on, look for inspiration in different industry. Right. So, I mean, so, my, so, so studying, studying in business, we had, um, you know, we're looking at the automotive industry, we're looking at electronics industries, and you get inspiration and you get ideas from doing that. Yeah. And then you can apply those things. And then people will tell you, nope, it will never work. And that gives you more energy and more, more uh, um, power to do it. Yeah, you know, uh, I did a I did a project in digital pathology not too long ago, and I found that there was such an education required in the industry to move people from a very old manual process, tr literally pathologists looking into a microscope, over to digitally scanned, uh, machine learning interpreted features. That it was so it was so disruptive that we spent most of our time educating people on the benefits and, you know, helping to, to break the mold of doing things the old way and, you know, overcoming some of those market education barriers can be some of the biggest, take some of the most energy for a startup. And, you know, people don't give enough thought to even just thinking about deploying capital to, to overcome some of those barriers. So when you, when you talk about selling being, you know, really good at marketing, that shouldn't be dismissed. I mean, that's a critical role because when you say marketing, you know, what I hear of with a technology like this is market education, you know, helping people become aware of the possibilities and educate the market so they're willing to say yes to doing things differently. So it's not just marketing and branding. It's frankly, I, I have to believe that a lot of what you do is education as well. It's, it's a huge portion and that's why the first two, three years of, of, of us running the business, we spend out on the road, All right? So we would spend 200, 250 days a year visiting customers. Yeah. And, and we saw that competitors, they would just sell their systems or their products and then let the customer figure it out. And we, we came to so many labs where we saw competitors' products just standing in the corner and they were just dusting. Yeah. While in the meantime, we came with our products we were there, we unpackaged it for the customer and then we, we helped them and show them how to work with it, yeah. you know, mix their cells with the material, print the structure, study it, and then, and then understand their future application. Yeah. So, so not only did that, of course, educate them about, you know, what the technology can really be good for, uh, but we also got a lot of insight into where are these researchers going in the next few years, which gave us ideas on what companies should we acquire, what technology should we develop, to stay in the game. Yeah. Well, that, that's really so important. And people shouldn't underestimate that. Well, so, so you've uh, achieved unicorn status. Congratulations. Where's, where's selling going next? Tell us as we wrap this up, uh, what, what's your next milestone? Where are you headed with the company? Very, very good question. Um, so for, for this year, and of course, the next coming year, we're focusing now while we structured ourselves essentially into three areas. So, so bioprinting is our core business where we, where, where we started the whole story, but uh, we've also added on two other areas, biosciences with a focus on, on omics, specifically in single cell genomics, uh, but also in, in sample prep for single cell proteomics. So we're definitely going into the omics field, understanding what are the cells doing, not only in the tissue, uh, yeah. how can we work with the cells prior to the tissue and then also after. 
Um, we've also structured ourselves a little bit on the industrial, uh, industrial solution side where we're essentially providing even manufacturing capabilities to companies that want to scale up their, their bioprinting or, or their um, single cell genomics workflow uh, yeah. to an industrial scale. And then we're now going out more even for diagnostics. So we want to have more of a workflow. We want, we want to own a bigger part of, of, of the customer's uh, work and, and be a helpful value creating partner for them. Uh, as a business, you know, we continue to, to buy companies, look at really cool, innovative technologies and, and try to disrupt the field. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think this, it's an exciting time to be in the field because there's so much integration of, of different component technology use and, and people pulling together computing, AI, machine learning, single cell sequencing is so cool. And, and right now, really providing more insight into, you know, tumor environments, which is so critical. And you know, tumor heterogeneity is, is such a, a daunting problem. You know, being able to understand that at that uh, tumor microenvironment level is critical. So, well, I, I applaud your success. Uh, we, we sure thank you for your help. And as you, men as you mentioned, potentially picking up other companies, um, I'll give a shout out to uh, uh, a regional program that is looking to create new companies right here in, in Roanoke and Blacksburg area. So RAMP is in Roanoke, and uh, we're really excited that the region is mobilizing around looking to incubate and accelerate our newest startups in biotech. So uh, Mary Miller at RAMP in Roanoke is openly recruiting now for her first cohort of life sciences companies. Uh, they're pick it's going to be a 12-week curriculum, uh, and you'll get access to mentoring, uh, introductions and access to venture capital, and uh, twenty thousand dollars in uh, in equity free funding to be able to launch your company so it's a great program um, we'll put the link to how to apply to this program in our show notes uh, and um, you know we really encourage everyone out there listening if you're thinking about starting something being disruptive uh, now is a great time there's so much upheaval and change in the markets that Frankly, the risk to start something now is less than you would think. So um, now, now's a great time to get involved. And there's no, there's no better example and uh, mentor and bellwether to look up to uh, than, than Eric. Eric Gainholm from Cellink, thanks for joining us today. And uh, congratulations okay. on the success and, uh, and keep it going. And we're proud to have you in the park and we thank you for all of, all of your support. Well, thank you so much for having me. And and, and lastly, if if, uh, if any students or or, uh, or people looking for 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 jobs or work in in the software field, you know, bioengineering, robotics, mechanical engineers, reach out to us. Info at selling dot com. Uh, we have as 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 you mentioned, Brett, our office at two thousand Craft Drive in the in the CRC. We're heavily recruiting. We need brilliant people. Fantastic. Thanks. We'll make sure to put all of those links as well in, in our show notes. Thanks for being our first guest and. Uh, Listen, you know, the good thing about not doing this at J.P. Morgan is uh, we don't have to worry about that long flight home. So uh, <laughs> maybe someday we'll all get back together in San Francisco. It's, it's one of the highlights and a great way to kick off the year. But um, uh, we thank you for your time, Eric, and, uh, and best of luck to you. And we're going to stay in touch. And so thanks for having me. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you next time.